The Vrokan fighter slammed into the Zephyrus moon, exploding into a massive fireball. As Lieutenant Jason Carter blasted overhead, his human reflexes and piloting skills unmatched by the aliens he fought beside and against. At 28, Carter was the sole human pilot in the Galactic Defense Force's elite Starhawk squadron, hand-picked for his abilities despite Commander Murloc's doubts about human inferiority. In the briefing room, the battle-hardened Saurian squadron leader paced before his team of insectoid cricks, avian avians and reptilian Saurians. Murloc growled that the ruthless Vrokan Empire had a new raptor fighter that outclassed the GDF. Adapt or die was his message. Conquer this threat or watch the Vrokans annihilate their worlds. An alarm blared, announcing a Vrokan attack on a defenseless GDF colony. As the Starhawks ran to their fighters, Carter gripped his flight controls, determined to prove that human pilots were the best in the galaxy and the only ones who could save them all from Vrokan conquest. It was time to show these aliens how to really fly. As the Starhawks dropped out of hyperspace above the besieged GDF colony, Lieutenant Jason Carter's heart raced with anticipation. The battle had already begun, with the sleek, angular shapes of Vrokan raptor fighters swarming the planet's atmosphere like a horde of angry wasps. It's all right, Starhawks, let's show these Vrokan scum what we're made of, Commander Murloc's gruff voice crackled over the comm. Engage at will. Carter gripped his flight controls tighter, his human reflexes itching to be unleashed. He throttled forward, diving into the fray with the rest of the squadron close behind. But as they closed in on the raptors, Carter quickly realized that something was wrong. The enemy fighters seemed to flicker in and out of existence, their outlines blurring and fading against the starry backdrop. I can't get a lock, Crick's pilot Zigstick hissed over the comm. They're too fast. Carter watched in horror as a raptor suddenly materialized behind Zigstick's fighter, its plasma cannons flaring. The Crix's ship exploded in a ball of flame, the wreckage spiraling toward the planet below. All around him, the Starhawks were taking heavy losses. The Raptors' superior speed and agility made them nearly impossible to hit, while their advanced stealth technology rendered them practically invisible to the Starhawks' targeting systems. Fall back and regroup, Murloc ordered, his voice strained. We need a new plan of attack. But Carter had spotted an opportunity. A lone raptor had broken away from the main group, its pilot growing overconfident. Carter broke formation and rocketed after it, ignoring Murloc's furious shouts over the comm. The raptor wove and dodged, trying to shake him, but Carter's intuition and unorthodox flying style allowed him to keep pace. He could almost sense the Vrokan pilot's mounting frustration as he matched its every move. Finally, Carter saw his chance. The raptor had made a sharp turn, exposing its flank for a split second. Carter squeezed the trigger, his plasma cannons roaring to life. The raptor vanished in a blinding explosion, and Carter let out a whoop of triumph as he soared through the debris field. Carter, what the hell was that? Murloc demanded as Carter rejoined the squadron. You disobeyed a direct order. Sir, with all due respect... We need to adapt our tactics, Carter replied, his adrenaline still pumping. These raptors are too fast and too stealthy for our usual strategies, but I have an idea. Murloc's scaly brow furrowed. I'm listening. We need to use the planet's terrain to our advantage, Carter explained. Lure the raptors into the canyon network. Our fighters are smaller and more maneuverable. We can use the tight spaces and winding paths to negate their speed advantage. Murloc nodded slowly. And their stealth technology. The planet's magnetic field is incredibly strong, Carter continued. If we can disrupt their stealth systems even for a few seconds at a time, we'll be able to get a lock and take them out. There was a long pause as Murloc considered the plan. Finally, he gave a curt nod. It's a good strategy, Carter. Risky, but it might just work. Starhawks, you heard the man. Let's regroup and prepare to engage the enemy on our terms. As the squadron formed up and prepared to dive into the canyons below, Carter felt a surge of pride. 
For the first time, he felt like he truly belonged among these alien warriors, and that together they might just have a chance to save the galaxy from the Vrokan threat. The Starhawks dived into the canyons, their engines roaring as they wove through the narrow passages. Carter took point, his fighter hugging the canyon walls as he navigated the treacherous terrain, with a deft touch on the controls. The rest of the squadron followed close behind, their formation tight and disciplined. Stay sharp, Starhawks, Carter called out over the comm. The raptors will be on us any second now. As if on cue, a volley of plasma fire erupted from behind them. The Vrokan raptors had taken the bait, their sleek fighters screaming into the canyons in pursuit of their prey. Engage at will, Murloc ordered, his voice crackling with static. Use the terrain to your advantage. The dogfight quickly devolved into a chaotic melee, with fighters twisting and turning through the canyons in a deadly dance. The Starhawks used every trick in the book to outmaneuver the raptors, hugging the canyon walls and using the tight spaces to force their enemies into unfavorable positions. Carter was in his element, his fighter darting through the canyons like a fish through water. He lined up shot after shot, his plasma cannons spitting fire as he tore through the Vrokan ranks. But the Vrokans were quick to adapt. A new wave of raptors suddenly appeared, their hulls bristling with strange, angular protrusions. Watch out! Zixtik cried out over the calm. They've got some kind of new weapon. A deafening screech filled the air, and Carter's fighter shuddered as if struck by a giant fist. His displays flickered and went dark, and he felt a wave of nausea wash over him. Sonic weapons, he gasped, fighting to keep his lunch down. They're trying to disable us. All around him, the Starhawks were in trouble. Fighters spun out of control, their pilots disoriented and helpless. The Raptors pressed their advantage, picking off the vulnerable Starhawks one by one. Carter gritted his teeth, his mind racing. They needed a new plan, and fast. Murloc, I've got an idea, he said, his voice strained. The geysers. If we can lure them into the geyser fields, the heat and pressure might damage their sonic weapons. There was a pause, and then Murloc's voice crackled over the comm. Do it, Carter, lead the way. Carter banked hard, his fighter screaming towards the geyser fields. The raptors followed close behind, their sonic weapons pulsing with malevolent energy. As they neared the geysers, Carter saw Murloc's fighter take a direct hit. The Saurian's engine sputtered and died, and his fighter began to spiral towards the ground. Without hesitation, Carter broke formation and gunned his engines, drawing the attention of the raptors pursuing Murloc. Get out of here, Murloc, he shouted over the comm. I'll handle these guys. Plasma fire stitched the air around him, and Carter juked and weaved trying to shake his pursuers. But there were too many of them, and he knew he couldn't outrun them forever. Suddenly a searing pain lanced through his body, and warning lights flashed across his displays. He'd taken a direct hit from a sonic weapon, and his engines were failing. But Carter refused to give up. Gritting his teeth against the pain, he aimed his fighter towards the heart of the geyser field, the raptors hot on his tail. If he was going down, he was going to take as many of them with him as he could. As they neared the geysers, the air began to shimmer with heat. Steam billowed from the vents, obscuring the raptors' vision and interfering with their senses. Carter's fighter shuddered and bucked as he fought to keep it under control. His life support systems were failing, and he could feel the heat searing his lungs with every breath. But he pushed forward, leading the raptors deeper into the geyser field. The pressure was building, the geysers ready to blow at any moment. Just a little further, he thought, his vision blurring, Almost there. Carter gripped the controls of his fighter, his knuckles white under his gloves. The heat from the geysers was intense, causing his engines to sputter and overheat. Warning lights flashed across his display, and he knew he had only seconds to act before his fighter suffered a catastrophic meltdown. With a grunt of effort, he shut down his engines, feeling the fighter shudder as it transitioned to a glide. The Vrokan Raptors were close behind their sonic weapons pulsing with energy as they fired relentlessly at the surrounding landscape. Rock and debris exploded around him, filling the air with a haze of dust and steam. 
Carter's mind raced as he scanned the geyser field, looking for the largest one. There, up ahead, a massive plume of steam and water erupted from the ground, towering hundreds of feet into the air. It was his only chance. With a deft touch on the controls, Carter aimed his fighter towards the geyser. His eyes narrowed in concentration. The raptors were closing in, their sonic weapons charging up for another volley. Just as he reached the geyser, Carter fired his remaining missiles at the base of the plume. The missiles streaked through the air, leaving trails of smoke in their wake. They hit the geyser with a massive explosion, causing a chain reaction that sent a shockwave through the entire field. The geyser erupted with incredible force, sending a massive plume of steam and superheated water into the air. The pursuing raptors were caught in the blast, their sonic weapons malfunctioning and exploding in a spectacular display of fire and steam. The Vrokan fighters were torn apart by the intense heat and pressure, their wreckage raining down onto the planet's surface. But Carter's fighter was also caught in the blast, the shockwave sending it tumbling out of control. Warning alarms blared in his ears as his displays flickered and died, his life support systems failing one by one. He struggled to maintain consciousness as his fighter plummeted towards the ground, the wind roaring past his cockpit. Carter! Murloc's voice crackled over the comm, barely audible over the chaos. Hold on, we're coming to get you! Carter's vision blurred and he felt himself slipping away, but through the haze he saw a glimmer of hope. The remaining Starhawks were forming up around him, their fighters moving in formation to slow his descent. The Evian pilot, Zephyr, closed her eyes in concentration, her feathered hands outstretched towards Carter's fighter. Slowly, almost imperceptibly, the human's descent began to slow, as if an invisible hand were guiding him towards the ground. Meanwhile, the Crix pilot, Zixtik, maneuvered his fighter alongside Carter's, his insectoid limbs working furiously to pry open the damaged cockpit. With a final grunt of effort, the canopy popped open, exposing Carter to the rushing wind. I've got him, Zixtik reported over the comm, his voice buzzing with excitement, preparing to extract the human pilot. As the Starhawks worked to save their comrade, the remaining Vrokan forces began to retreat, their fighters scattering into the atmosphere. The GDF colony was safe, thanks to Carter's unconventional tactics and the teamwork of the Starhawks. But the battle was far from over. As Carter drifted into unconsciousness, he knew that the war against the Vrokan Empire had only just begun, and he would need all of his skills and the support of his alien allies to see it through to the end. The Starhawks' fighters screamed through the sky, their engines straining as they raced towards the GDF medical facility on Zephyrus. In the lead fighter, Murloc cradled Carter's limp form, the human's blood staining the Saurian's flight suit. The rest of the squadron flew in tight formation, their faces grim as they escorted their fallen comrade to safety. As they touched down on the landing pad, a team of xenomedical specialists rushed forward, their expressions tight with concern. They carefully loaded Carter onto a hovering stretcher, their movements precise and urgent. Hold on, Carter, Murloc growled, his voice rough with emotion. You're not dying on me today. The human didn't respond, his face pale and still beneath the oxygen mask. The specialists whisked him away, disappearing into the depths of the medical facility. Hours passed, the Starhawks pacing the waiting room in tense silence. Zixtik fiddled with his insectoid claws, while Zephyr preened her feathers nervously. Murloc stood apart from the others, his gaze fixed on the door that separated him from his wounded squadmate. Finally, a Crick's doctor emerged, his compound eyes downcast. Murloc stepped forward, his heart pounding in his chest. How is he? the Saurian asked, his voice tight. The doctor shook his head. We did everything we could, but his injuries were too severe, he didn't make it. The words hit Murloc like a physical blow. He staggered back, his eyes wide with shock and grief. Around him, the other Starhawks reacted with similar emotions, their faces contorting with pain and disbelief. News of Carter's death spread quickly throughout the GDF, his name spoken with reverence and sorrow. The human pilot had sacrificed his life to save the colony and his squadmates, 
and his loss was felt keenly by all who knew him. In the days that followed, Murlock found himself consumed by thoughts of Carter. The human had been an unconventional pilot, his tactics and strategies often at odds with traditional GDF doctrine. But he had also been a brilliant tactician, able to adapt to changing circumstances and think on his feet. As Murlock sat in his quarters, staring at a hollow image of Carter, an idea began to take shape in his mind. He called a meeting of the Starhawks, his expression determined. Carter's sacrifice will not be in vain, he declared. We will honor his memory by ensuring that his legacy lives on. He outlined his plan for a new training program, one that would incorporate Carter's unconventional tactics and emphasize the importance of adaptability and teamwork. The other Starhawks listened intently, their expressions shifting from grief to determination. We'll call it Carter's Gambit, Murlock said, his voice filled with conviction and it will be the cornerstone of GDF pilot training from this day forward. The program was an instant success, attracting pilots from across the galaxy. Under Murloc's guidance, they learned to think outside the box, to adapt to changing circumstances, and to work together as a cohesive unit. As the war against the Vrokan Empire raged on, the Starhawks became a symbol of hope and resilience, their tactics and teamwork now honed by Carter's legacy. They fought on the front lines, their fighters dancing through the stars as they battled the Vrokan forces. In a bittersweet ceremony, the GDF posthumously awarded Carter the highest honor for his bravery and sacrifice. Murlock accepted the medal on behalf of his fallen comrade, his eyes shining with unshed tears. Carter's sacrifice will never be forgotten, he vowed, and we will continue to fight for the freedom and safety of all species in the galaxy just as he did. As the ceremony concluded, the Starhawks took to the skies once more, their fighters painting the sky with the colors of the GDF and the various species that made up the squadron. They flew in perfect formation, a testament to the unity and strength that Carter's sacrifice had inspired. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.